Good morning and welcome to chapel here for Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church and School. My name is Pastor Joe Nauman. Today is December 8th. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the balance that our God shows in his love for his people and also for the justice that he has in, in who he is. How he punishes wickedness and evil and sin and also how he shows great love to you and me and all people because of his very nature. We know that God is love. Uh, there's a couple verses from Isaiah chapter 42 I'd like to read to you today that, that I think help explain to us the balance in these characteristics of the nature of our God between, on the one hand, his, his justice and his punishment for sin, and also, on the other hand, his great love for all of us. So these are the first four verses of Isaiah chapter 42. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. He will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, a smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail, nor be discouraged, till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands shall wait for his law. See, this section beautifully balances out the work of Jesus. And that's what Isaiah says here. He says, this is God speaking. He says, behold, my servant whom I uphold. That's Jesus. Jesus is the servant. He is the one that God sent to serve us. And it's that humble attitude in Christ that is really so amazing, isn't it? He's God above, God almighty, and having all power in heaven and earth. And yet he comes as a servant, as a lowly baby born in a stable, whose first bed was a manger, and it's this Jesus whom God elected. He calls him his elect one. And that's what the word Christ means, right? Christ means the anointed one, the one whom God chose. And this is the one God had the specific purpose for, that he would bring forth salvation for all people. He put his spirit upon him so that the, he, he would speak with God's words, that he would do exactly what God wanted him to do. And most importantly in this text, he says, he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Jesus came to bring about justice. Now justice is an interesting thing, isn't it? Justice is something that I think we all want. You know, how often do we complain about things not being fair? It's not fair. She gets an extra piece of candy. I only get one. We think we get pretty mad when things aren't fair, when things aren't just. And you can look at society today and how many people think that the the system for punishment for different crimes is totally unfair and whether that's true or not it's all a cry for justice we want things to be perfectly fair one person treated the same as the other now what we realize in ourselves as we look at the bible is that if god is perfectly just we're all deserving of hell right he makes that very absolutely clear that the wages of sin is death and that can be a scary thing isn't it if god is perfectly just and I have sinned and sinned often and sinned daily, well, boy, then I am deserving of death. It says he'll bring justice to the Gentiles. But then he goes on, he says, he, uh, talking about Jesus' work and what he would do and, and his, his passive obedience, we call this. He would not cry out. He would not raise his voice. He would not cause his voice to be heard in the street. And here's also a beautiful sign of his love. He says, a bruised reed he will not break. A smoking flax he will not quench. So think about a, a, a stick that's, that's really beat up and, and battered and broken. Really easy to break, right? You can simply take it and snap it in half. Or think of a, a candle that's just flickering, that's barely, barely lit anymore. It's really easy just to blow that thing out, right? And that's what this verse is saying is when your faith is feeling really weak, it's feeling a, like a little flickering candle, or when your faith feels like a bruised stick, a stick that's barely holding together, that's easy to snap in two. When we come to God in our state of weakness, God's not going to just break us in half. He's not going to blow out our faith. He loves us. He wants to encourage us. And that's a really important thing to remember, right? Because there's lots of times where our faith feels weak. Lots of times where we don't feel strong enough on our own to, to get through the days ahead or the, the latest challenge that's arisen in our life. We wonder how we're going to go on. 
And here God encourages us. He says, come, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He wants us to, weak as we are, to come to him. And he says, I'm going to do justice. And while that justice can be scary when we remember that we're sinners, that justice is beautiful when we remember that Jesus has already suffered the full punishment for our sins. And so because God is just, he's not going to punish us again for sins that were already paid for. That would be unjust. He's saying, I am just. I've already punished Jesus. He's suffered for your sins and for my sins and for the sins of all people. And so it would be unjust to punish someone again for a crime that has already been paid for. Because Jesus already paid for our sins, the just thing to do is now to take you and I and our faith as weak as it is and to build us up, to encourage us and to, to continue to trust in him. You know, this is one of the really important things to remember is that God didn't simply, did God didn't simply ignore our sins. God didn't simply wipe our sins and, and throw them in the closet or, or find a way to cheat the system God nailed our sins to Jesus on the cross those sins were paid for they were a crime that needed to be punished and Jesus suffered for that punishment on the cross he bore our sins he silently through his passive obedience endured it all to take our sins away and because of what he did for us now we have eternal life in him that's what verse 4 tells us. He says, or verse 3, he will bring forth justice for truth. You know, truth is something in our day and age that is thrown a lot around. A lot of people believe in my truth or your truth or we all have our own truth. But, but God here says there is absolute truth and it's something outside of yourself. And that's something that's so important with our faith too, right? When we have those days where, boy, I don't feel so strong in the faith. I don't feel a connection to Jesus today. I don't feel... Well, what God says is, my word is truth, right? The Bible is true. Jesus died on the cross to take away your sins. It doesn't matter how you feel in your heart. God says, here's how I feel toward you, and the way you feel doesn't matter. I love you anyway. Jesus died for your sins anyway. And that's the justice for truth that he's talking about here, is he wants you and I to understand and to embrace and to fully, fully accept the fact that he has died for our sins, that eternal life is won for us in his name, and that now we have eternal life. Verse 4 says, He will not fail nor be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands shall wait for his law. God, Jesus, his God's servant, has won this for us. It is absolutely true. Regardless of how your day is going, regardless of if we're locked up in our houses because of COVID, regardless of anything in this world, God, who is unchanging, still loves you today, tomorrow, and will love you to the end of your life because you are his dear child. Because Jesus died on the cross and took away your sins. Because he chose you from eternity as one of his elect to go to heaven to be with him forever. You are his child. So may we continue to hold to this wonderful truth. May we remember when we feel down, when our faith feels weak, that God's not going to turn us away. He's not going to blow out our faith. God's going to encourage us and strengthen us and allow us to get through this time that we're in right now and encourage us to get through the days ahead as well. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank and bless you once more again today for your wonderful word, which does strengthen us, encourage us, and bless us in our faith. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to send your spirit among us, help us to turn to you and to grow in this wonderful truth of the of jesus and all that he has done for us uh, thank you lord for that wonderful gift and during this advent season remind us of all the the wonderful things you did both before jesus coming to prepare us for his coming and also all that he did through his life death and resurrection uh, thank you lord jesus for for coming to this world for living that perfect life for dying on the cross for rising again into into newness of life and for living in heaven where you rule and reign for our good. Keep all these truths forefront in our mind, both today and in the days ahead. Continue to encourage us as we face the times in which we live. And Lord, be our leader, be our guide, be our strength. In your name we pray. And we also pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, bless and keep you, and we will see you soon.